In a realm where magic reigned supreme, reality itself was a fragile construct. By the will of the ancients, an enigmatic race of deific beings, five grimoires of unfathomable power determined the fates of the 47 realms of existence. Together, the Necronomicon, Sanguinomicon, Psychologicon, Astrologicon, and the Cosmologicon were gifted to the fledgling races and kept at the library under the watchful eyes of the assigned curator. But with such power at one's fingertips, what was a bird to do? Was free will the answer to upset the cold balance of eternity? Or was it simply an illusion? The curators were dutiful ravens tasked with the responsibility of guarding the grimoires and ensuring their safe return. Occasionally, the library granted permission to those worthy enough to gaze upon the otherworldly books, a brief opportunity to borrow their power and alter the course of the central realms. After the allotted time, the curator would collect the grimoires and return them to the rightful location until they were to be leased out again. This very cycle repeated perpetually since time immemorial, and countless ages came and passed under the relentless force of infinity. After an undetermined period of time, the ancients absconded to the Midlight Realm, and a devious plot was hatched, resulting in each of the five grimoires being stolen from the library. Krevlon, the good bishop, stole the Necronomicon, a grimoire that granted one knowledge of death, passing, and heavenly light. With this volume in his possession, Krevlon created an army of undead who would serve an even greater master than himself. Like many in his station, Krevlon's religious fervor only strengthened his inability to discern good and evil. As such, his mind was ripe for the taking and was quite easily manipulated by a dark being known only as the Reviled Spectre. The Reviled Spectre snatched the Sanguinomicon. This grimoire granted its user knowledge over inheritance and packs. With this volume in his possession, he could easily influence domains, manipulate emotions, and steer the course of civilizations at will from the safety of the Outer Realms. Despite his cowardly nature, his dominion over the Midnight was indisputable. Mesmeron's greed knew no bounds. As such, only the Psychologicon had the potential to satiate his unending thirst for knowledge and power. This grimoire granted its reader the ability to comprehend the secrets of the mind and the shared nature across all realities. But even this wasn't enough for the Lord of Dreams, and in his lust for the unattainable, he consumed one of the sacred rivers between realms and fell into a space between reality itself, a mind-bending place from which he could never emerge. Alestra stole not only the Astronomicon, but the sun itself. This grimoire revealed the happenings of all things divine and celestial. Her actions taken to prevent the sun's collision with the world resulted in a crack that split the sky in two thus beginning the Age of Midlight. Helbroth sought the power of the Cosmologicon. This grimoire provided supreme knowledge of all things corporeal, and with it, the ability to reign over the physical world. But was this catastrophe simply a coincidence, or a coordinated effort to break the endless cycle set forth by the very architects of reality itself? Regardless, a curator's task was unchanging, and the grimoires were to be returned at all costs. For millennia, many curators had either failed to answer their call or simply fallen in their quest. The nameless curator, however, was unlike any before him. In his feathered hands, he held the fate of the 47 realms of existence, and after he had fulfilled his purpose, reality itself would never be the same. With the blood of the ancients flowing within him and the power of midnight surging through his staff, the curator knew no equal. He would stop at nothing to collect the grimoires and traverse even the most vile depths of the Outer Realms to retrieve them. One by one, each of the self-proclaimed grimoire lords fell to the curator's magical prowess. As he scoured the lands, even the most coveted of the ancients' secrets were unveiled, and relics of untold power were used to great effect. With four of the five grimoires in his possession, the curator crossed the River of Light and entered the chamber of the Queen of Light, Elestra. Just as the legends told, her beauty was matched only by her cunning mind. When confronted, she didn't engage in combat, but rather in a battle of wit. Elestra offered a proposition and a potential solution to the inevitable occlusion. The matriarch of the Midnight Parliament explained it best after the curate had severed her traitorous kin, Haragusket, from the mortal coil. The 47 realms were connected by an intricate system of rivers that flowed between the plains. Due to the recent fracturing between sunlight and midnight, as a result of Elestra's transgressions, 
the very threads of reality were being torn to shreds. As such, the entirety of the 47 realms were endlessly spiraling together in a cataclysmic dance of cosmic proportions. Alessra's offer was simple. Either fulfill one's duty as a curator, return the grimoires to the library, and descend into eternal midlight, or steal the grimoires and create a new world, where the age of midlight and the chaos of 3,000 years would soon be forgotten to the test of time, a world that could more easily withstand the impending doom of the occlusion. The curator knew precisely what had to be done. The library would have to be destroyed, and the ancients along with it. As he crossed the threshold of the library gate, he found himself in a realm between realms, the very origin of the ancients themselves. Sensing betrayal, the all-seeing eye struck first. However, it was not enough, for the curator was the most powerful being in all the central realms, and perhaps even beyond. With little effort, the curator single-handedly destroyed the ancients and the Midlight Age. With the five grimoires in tow, he returned to Lester's chamber, and together, along with the infinitely wise matriarch, the trio ushered in a new age of light. But was this truly in the best interest of the realms, or simply the better of two evils? The flow of time flowed with and against this new world, and with every passing moment, the future unfolded new possibilities. The curator would serve as the patriarch of this new age, and armed with a grimoire of his own, not even the occlusion could alter his course.